because there you go. Uh, many people will arrive a little bit late and they are going to miss the information. And uh, also important to say that, you know, after I present this information, I'm going to give some information about our programs, in particular, you know, a market entry program, a startup visa program, because we normally get a lot of questions. And this is the last info session we are doing this year. So hopefully, you know, um, if you guys have questions, please start putting on the chat and I'll be uh, happy to answer your questions uh, as well, JP, uh, you know, being here. So being said that, uh, I'm going to start with this presentation. This is a presentation I do all the time and because precisely, you know, we are a community of newcomers. We help startups from all over the world. You, uh, if you have been a part of our community, you uh, have seen that we recently have changed our name and our name is now Global Startups. And that actually reflects, you know, the startups that are coming to our community they are coming not just from Latin America, but they are coming from different parts of the world. And we deal in daily basis, you know, with the startups that are trying to enter a mature market. And some people are really interested in to having customers in Canada, having invested, investment in Canada. But as well, we have people that are not just interested in that. Of course, they are looking into the U.S. market as well having customers in the U.S. market, investment in the U.S. market or in Europe. Uh, so those are mature markets. Many times the startups that are coming are coming with wonderful ideas and wonderful projects. Some of them actually with very mature uh, companies in Latin America or other uh, emerging markets, but it takes too long for them to get the first customer and the first investment. And, and, and I aim that most of you are coming here because you want to have more revenue because you want to have investment and then you know things are not happening and i want to tackle that problem right now after having years of experience uh you know working with the startups and <laughs> over and over what is happening here why this is not uh you know successfully transforming your company into a good company in a mature market I have to say also, you know, that in portfolio, we have companies that have doing have done very well. It, we have two unicorns that we always talk about, you know, one in, a, in Brazil, another one in Uruguay. And we also have companies that are doing pretty well, uh, you know, in sales traction and investment in Canada. But, you know, there is a number of companies that, you know, they, they never found their track or they are in the process of finding the track and, uh, you know, if you have been a part of our community, uh, maybe you have been a part of something that is called Lessons Learned. Uh, this is an event that we do here in Toronto where we talk about those challenges, you know, for companies that are coming from emerging markets. So I'm today, you know, listening also your questions about how to uh, increase your presence in, 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 as a company, you know, in a mature market. But I'm going to give you a first, you know, a perspective of what you can do in order to understand this better and why sometimes the strategies are not working. Uh, so the first thing is understanding, you know, uh, when a company comes from a, a mature market or entering a mature market, you have to think about that, you know, there is a market intelligence and analysis about the client profile. And, uh, you know, guys, uh, I hear many times people telling me, I'm, a, uh, I'm already an advanced company. I already have X amount of clients. I already have X amount of, uh, you know, revenue and investment in my home country. I don't need to do market intelligence. I already know my customers. And, you know, it's very difficult uh, to say this to the companies, but many times the customer may have the same profile or similar profile in North America and Europe, but the approach is so different that you fail sometimes to actually get that first customer to your services because it's simply, you know, a different way to approach uh, that customer here, even if it's the same one, even if you have 20 years in your market, even if you have a wonderful revenue there, basically you are going to be perceived as new one in this market. And this is something that you will have to, uh, you know, acknowledge sooner or later. Uh, it could be an acknowledged right now while I'm telling you that part, or it can be an acknowledged that it will happen over the time and you will have to hear from other people telling you what I'm saying uh, this today. So it's very important to know that 
whatever size of your company you have, whatever process you are on in your home country, you still will have to do some market intelligence and analyze the, you know, the client profile. Otherwise, you are going to fail in what is going to be the strategy to reach that client here. Uh, the second thing is that you may question yourself, how is that, you know, this process is actually working in, in my home country or in my region, how I've been able to reach out so many customers, you know, in my region, and this is now happening in North America or in, in Europe. And the reason why is that in emerging markets, uh, you know, sectors tend to be highly informal, it's less sophisticated, uh, you know, the domination of verticals. So for that reason, you know, you may not have the, the same level of competition. You may not have the same, again, level of approach. So, you know, things, you know, your country, you grow up there, you know, your region, you grow up there, you know how to approach people there. Being said that, you know, the most difficult part sometimes is actually to, uh, you know, master that cultural business difference that I'm talking here because uh, you just don't know uh, the nuances around, you know, having a new customer in North America or in Europe. Uh, you know, your tar target audience will be different, different and you have to acknowledge that from day one. If you want to have a good market, market fit strategy and market entry strategy, you will have to, uh, you know, acknowledge this part. What is your target audience? And, and again, for more that you have years and years of experience on this, I will say that, you know, just take it from the beginning, start thinking about, you know, maybe I don't know everything that I supposed to know and I'm just based on assumptions in my strategy right now. Yeah, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the main difference of doing uh, business in mature markets versus emerging markets. Uh, but I also want to, uh, you know, share with you and, and you know, this is, this is something that, you probably have here over and over or read in different, uh, you know, blogs and, and, you know, information around you that the major uh, problem for why, you know, companies fail is because of poor product market fit. It's really a thing, guys. I've seen it firsthand over the last, uh, the last seven years. Um, if you don't have the right product in the right market, then, you know, things are not going your way. And sometimes you can have a product and you can, you know, tweak all your product in order to make sure that you are getting into market fit. But again, we go backwards into the first part that you need to have a market intelligence and you need to have some base in order to tweak all this pro product. You um, uh, may have, uh, you know, some contacts, family members, friends, you know, in mature markets that sometimes are giving you information, but that's of course not enough. Not because you have one or two customers that prove that you know your product is a market fit for that market. That's also important to acknowledge. You know, when we are working with company, we are always aiming to work with the front runner. We are uh, we are aiming to have you know a relationship with a company that can really scale up in the market. And we are here to help you every way to make sure that you are that front runner. And the reason what I'm saying this is that many times the companies come to us and they say, well, uh, you know, I want to have a product market fit. I want to have, you know, clients in North America and I want to have the investment, but I don't want to change my strategy or I don't want to change, you know, the way that I've been doing things for the last 10, seven, five years, whatever is the time that your company have done it. And, and that's kind of like, you know, a, a, it's, it's a really game changer when you are like an open mindset, listening about how you can do this instead of, you know, um, trying to do the same stuff that you have doing at your home country, you know, the same type of strategy and try to copy paste. That's not going to work. Uh, you know, that's the first thing that I have to say about the poor uh, product market fit. And that will drive your company to, you know, close and lose investment and lose time, you know, when you are actually entering into this type of strategy. Um, for some of you that are entering to this webinar, I'm aiming, uh, and I think that most of you are actually thinking in a strategy to enter North America. 
And I, I think, you know, uh, most of you are also looking to, you know, again, increase sales and increase investment. And if that's really the, uh, uh, you know, the goal for you to enter into this webinar and to understand how to do that, you know, the first thing I will have to say is that how prepared are you mentally to change your strategy and to listen and to make sure that your product will be a fit for the strategy and the money that you are going to put on this and the time that you are going to put on this. This is an important, uh, you know, part of the uh, the whole thing that you are aiming to do here. Um, the other two reasons, you know, for why companies fail in those strategies is because of the grown marketing strategies, for sure. You know, grown marketing and sales strategies play a role on here. Same thing because the normally the company or the founder doesn't understand the mentality of the client or how to approach the client. And of course, uh, we have seen some cases with, you know, team and HR issues, uh, you know, where co-founders are not anymore uh, in an agreement on how the strategy should work. And, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, things go apart uh, during the process. So, uh, you know, that's why I have this question here. Why is this still, uh, this is still a thing? Because, uh, you know, it has been proven over and over that for and, and you can probably uh, check your, uh, you know, statistics, statistics in the last 20 years or 15 years. And, you know, many people have mentioned that these three, you know, elements here is nothing that people don't know, but people continue making mistakes over these three main elements. Um, so I'm hoping with that, you know, with this information and this webinar that you are going to get in, in, you know, an awareness that this is real. This is not just the statistics and this is not just me talking here. I've seen it firsthand and it's very painful, you know, for companies that don't change that strategy and don't change that mindset to understand that they are entering a mature market. Uh, the last slide here, and after that, I will be speaking about, you know, uh, our programs in global startups. And uh, please, if you have any questions, uh, you know, add them into uh, the chat box or you can, you know, just raise your hand and open your mic. Um, I'm here just to answer your questions, you know, uh, based on the experience that we have with over 200 startups that we have incubated and accelerated in global startups from all around the world. We have seen many types of strategies, many types of failures. So if you have particular questions about something in regards of market fit, please do. Uh, so this part about uh, becoming uh, global, you know, for you, if you have a company, uh, I really want to for you to think about what really this means to you, you know? Uh, what is global for you? Or what is the growing strategy in your head? You know, how how do you picture that global strategy in your head? Um, maybe, you know, you are dreaming too small or maybe you are dreaming too big for the size of your company. Um, you have to analyze very carefully that strategy. Uh, the second point here about are you up to the infinite game? Uh, this is more uh, behind the, uh, you know, uh, the methodology of Simon Sinek. Uh, if you guys don't know Simon Sinek, please Google him. Uh, he's a great, uh, you know, a, a leader uh, that uh, talks about, you know, how companies go or not for an infinite game. Um, and really think through what is your market, not, not just, you know, enter into this type of process of expanding your company in North America because, you know, economy can be bad at your country. Maybe you are right now looking into actually expand your uh, customer database and you are doing pretty well. Maybe you are adopting new technologies. We are getting into tech boot camps where we are going to be helping companies to adopt AI and blockchain, you know, in the, in the next year. Um, what is the reason, you know, where is the, what is your market? You know, why are you selecting that market? Um, have you hear others failures and, you know, in how they have tackled those problems? And uh, what is going to be your major um, uh, difference here? So that that's kind of like, uh, you know, the presentation in general. 
and I'm going to go for uh, what is the um, uh, programs now. Uh, but I'm not so sure right now if somebody has any questions in regards of, uh, you know, the presentation itself, or if you have questions in particular about how to create a, you know, meaningful uh, market fit strategy in North America. Maybe you have some ideas in mind, or maybe you want to share something here that can be helpful for everyone. Um, if you do, please um, raise your hand or again, uh, just uh, send me a note in the chat and then I will be continuing uh, you know, the conversation and answer your question. So, okay, um, for now, I don't see anyone in the chat with a particular question or comment. So I will continue with the info session and you know, I will continue for another 10, 12 minutes. And if somebody has questions, please let me know. Um, this is our new website. Uh, we're very excited about the new brand, a again, because it's reflecting, you know, the community that we have right now, which is a community from all around the world, you know, companies that are coming to Canada to expand business. And many of you may be asking yourself, why Canada uh, in particular, you know, why is that companies are coming to the country to expand business? And it's because the amazing support that they get here you know, just not from, uh, you know, the perspective of uh, having coaches and a really nice ecosystem, uh, you know, with good support around, but it's also, you know, the fact that there are some funding around, you know, some grants, some investment that can be done for companies that are relocated in Canada. So that's one of the most important parts. Uh, maybe many of the, you guys have here, uh, you know, that we are one of the designated companies for the Stata Visa program. And I'm going to kind of focus the presentation in that area uh, because most of the time we get, you know, questions about the Stata Visa program. So our programs, and you will see here, uh, we have the Stata Visa program, the NIA program, and the Go, Glo Go Global uh, program. Uh, the most popular one uh, tends to be, you know, people trying to apply for the Stata Visa program. And uh, those are the acceleration programs here. We need companies to start from market entry program. And the reason why is that many uh, of the companies, this is first time entering in North America, some of them may have a couple of clients in North America. So by being eligible, uh, you know, uh, or in order to get eligible to start a visa program, we require companies to first pass the three first uh, months program of market entry, which is basically a soft landing program. And that soft landing program will give us, you know, the tools and information that we require in order to comply with the requirements of a Stata Visa program. Uh, so a couple of things here. Uh, I'm not so sure how many of you are aware of what is a designated organization or how the Stata Visa program works. But in particular, there are three types of designated organizations. We have the uh, accelerators and incubators, which is one of them. You will see in the website of the Government of Canada is the incubator, uh, you know, um, designated. And you won't find the word accelerator, but basically they put everything in one pot. Um, the second one is angel invest investors or venture capital firms, you know, that also can invest, uh, you know, give an intention letter of investment in companies that are aiming to enter to the Stata Visa program. Um, now, this is a very complex program that uh, gives, uh, you know, a five, um, up to five co-founders a letter of support for them to have a permanent residence in Canada. Uh, so many times, you know, people are very excited because they say, wow, you know, we can get a permanent residence, we can move our company, and this is going to be great. And, um, well, you know, the, the idea behind is that, you know, the government of Canada is giving uh, permanent residence for uh, what is a company that you are going to put in the country. Um, so for that reason, you need to keep working very hard to make that company actually grow and happen. Um, I believe that the, the program as it was uh, built was for companies was, uh, that were highly scalable. Uh, that also means that implies, you know, the company has to have, uh, it has to be technology based with intellectual property and they have to have some traction in our criteria. They have to have some traction in their home country. And when we when we talk about traction in particular, we, we talk about sales traction, 
customer based traction or you know investment traction it could be like you know you are still customer based you may be mvp uh, especially for uh, companies that are in the clean tech sector or uh, in, in yeah health tech sector where com commercialization uh, commercialization cycles are longer than expected uh, then you know mvp uh, readiness is just fine uh, but when the companies have a little bit more experience, you know, and they are software based uh, or sometimes, you know, hardware is kind of a little bit different, but software based in particular, you should have already customer base. Um, that's how we see it. In, in the intellectual property minimum, you have to be able to prove that, you know, you are the owner of your code, uh, the owner of, or, you know, potentially uh, can feel for patents in the future. Because otherwise investment is not going to happen. And also, uh, you know, the government of Canada supports companies that have intellectual property strategy in place because precisely they want these companies to grow. So it's very important that, you know, you understand how the program works behind uh, there are many programs that are like uh, similar with the startup visa in a way that you still will get a work permit or um, you know a temporary permanent resident temporary residence in Canada, but it doesn't have to be a startup visa program. Uh, you know, so we can also talk about those type of programs. Uh, just disclaimer: I'm not an immigration lawyer, so you cannot uh, you know expect that my answer will be 100% accurate. I'm giving you an answer here based on experience and the companies that we have had in a Star Visa program. So the last thing that I'm going to say here is that this program is currently open for applications for those that are coming to Canada in March and next year. So uh, the, the program starts in March next year. So applications are open until January 28th. And uh, we are hoping to get the, the, the first cohort next year in March. We have another cohort in June and last cohort in September. So in total, three cohorts a year. Uh, and, you know, companies that are graduating from market entry program then can, you know, uh, basically enter to any of these three programs. Uh, the Star Visa program, the Go Global program, the NIA program is a little bit, uh, you know, has a lot of uh, uh, a kind of extra criteria there because this one in particular is for um, uh, owners uh, that are newcomers already with a permanent residence or, uh, you know, new citizens in Canada. So this is a program that is also supported by government and is helping us a lot with the newcomers that are based in, um, in the country. This is a country level based program, a startup visa program as well, Go Global as well. The startup visa program, the only part that you have to consider as well uh, with this program is that this is a program that doesn't work in Quebec. Uh, and Quebec has their, their own, rule, own rules in, in regards of immigration. And this is the reason why we cannot work with companies in Quebec. But other than that, we have companies in British Columbia, Alberta, Manitoba, uh, Newfoundland, and Ontario having Ontario the major part and concentration of the companies that come under a startup visa program. Uh, finally, and again, if you have any questions, please just post them in the chat. Um, and you know, once I finish this, I will just uh, uh, basically stop the recording and you know, we can share this with all of you guys uh, if you want to have uh, you know, some extra information or review the information that I'm sharing here. Uh, but the last two things is uh, regarding the tech camps and boot camps. Next year, we're going to have several uh, boot camps. This is sometimes a program that some of the startups, uh, you know, like to come, but those programs are in person, boot camps and tech camps. Um, these uh, others, Startup Visa, NIA, Go Global, they can be online. Market entry also can be online uh, or hybrid. Um, but the tech camps are certainly in person and boot camps are in person. So for any of you guys that are interested in maybe, uh, you know, become a part of, uh, you know, the tech camps, this, this is a one week tech camp that is uh, aiming to help companies to absorb new technologies and integrate new technologies like AI and uh, blockchain. So these camps are going to happen in March, in April and May, sorry, next year. We are going to have more information about these camps, uh, you know, in our newsletter. And then the boot camps are happening in different types of the year. These boot camps are free. Uh, these boot camps, the tech camps are not, but the boot camps are free. 
and uh, you know companies are coming in person and they are visiting some of the startup innovation ecosystem and clusters that we have in Ontario. Uh, so one of the most popular ones is the Hamilton Niagara Bootcamp. Uh, so for that one, uh, you know, certainly that one is going to happen in October next year, which are coming in person. We have some around uh, March, May, uh, September and October uh, so far for, for your calendars. So this is it for now. Uh, I'm not so sure if anyone has any questions or comments. Uh, please let me know. Um, uh, do you work with the Latin American Business Network and what is their role? Uh, Miguel, the Na Latin American Business Network is too broad. Uh, I want to learn a little bit more. What do you mean with Latin American Business Network? There is like a uh, few institutions on that part. <laughs> I just, uh, hi there. Hey, hey Miguel. Hi there, good morning. I uh, I just realized that they're having an event um, coming up, and I was just looking into it. It's it's in Vancouver, but I'm not sure if they're in Toronto as well. Oh, okay. But the the, the institution is called Latin American Business Network. Correct. Uh, okay. Okay. Because you know we have here the Toronto Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and we have you know Hispanotech, and so. I was thinking that you probably was, uh, you know, referring to the different type of institutions, but in particular, I don't know them, uh, but I'm pretty sure that they, they, they may give some resources. Um, I have some Latin American community in Vancouver. If you want me to connect you with some of them there, maybe they know somebody inside if you want to have a connection there. I, I wasn't aware that there was such a community in Vancouver. So, so to see that they're doing a business um, network and a, and a full event, um, I, I thought I would just bring it up. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Miguel, for bringing it up. <laughs> so anyone else has any other question, comments? I actually do have another question if there's no one else. Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm local. I'm from Toronto. Yeah. But I'm um, looking for a a startup founder, uh, ideally somebody in the in the tech space, yeah. somebody who can um, uh, do what I can't essentially. Yeah. Where's do the founder? Do you facilitate any connections, whether it be locally or or internationally? Yeah, we have a lot of founders inside uh, our community, but I will say for you in particular, if you are looking for a tech founder, you should be connecting with Founders Beta. That's a really good community where, you know, some people that don't have the, let's say, technology skills and are looking for a tech co-founder, it's a really good community for that. Yeah, and maybe Antler as well, Miriam, I don't mm -hmm. know. They have to go through a, like a further uh, screening, I guess. But I think that's also an option. They they also have like the the technical side on that one. So I'm gonna post that one as well, Miguel. If you wanna have a look at it as well. Yeah. Fantastic. What was the name of the first one? Founders Beta. Founders. Beta. I told you it's Antler. Got it. So that's B E T A. Founders Beta. Yes. Right, Miriam? Founders better? Yes. Founders better. Uh, uh, yeah. Arayemi, uh, thank you so much for letting me know. We were going to see. But the application just opened today, so I'm not so sure maybe it was an issue in the website, but uh, <laughs> I will fix it after this, this call for sure. Yeah, they, they can send an email to Marceli. I'm going to post her email just in case because I know there was a, a problem with the, with the link that is getting yeah. resolved now. Yeah. So uh, Marcel Solda, if you go to, uh, you know, about us uh, here, you know, you will see um, who is in our team, right? This is, this is our team. And basically, Marcel is the program coordinator uh, for that program. So you can actually reach her out or, you know, uh, connect her on LinkedIn. And um, she will be happy to guide you through the application process as well while we are you know just fixing that part on the on the website anyone else with questions comments
Okay, guys, I really want to thank you for your time uh, today. I'm recording this session. This session will go to you, you know, um, if you want to connect with us, just please do. Um, and any other question, you can always send us a note to contact at uh, globalstartups.tech. Thank you for being here today and uh, have a wonderful, wonderful week. Bye now. Thank you so much, guys, for coming. See you. Bye.